Coming up on the Roadrunner Review, men's and women's basketball are off and running, and we recap the fall sports seasons. Volleyball, men's and women's soccer, and of course, cross country. That and more is coming up on the Roadrunner Review. Welcome to the first ever episode of the Roadrunner Review, a magazine show that features specifically Metro State sports. I'm Eric Lansing. We have plenty of great stuff on the show, so let's get right to those highlights. We'll tip off with men's hoops. They started the season at the Nest, the home floor of the Metro State Roadrunners. They took on the Hard Rockers of South Dakota Mines, the 12th ranked runners getting hyped for the new basketball season. First half action, senior Brian Miner comes up with the steal and he goes coast to coast for the layup. Metro exploding for a 14 2 lead. How about the freshman Jonathan Morris? He bangs underneath for two of his 11 points in, the, in his first collegiate game. Again, Morris with the deuce. He also grabbed nine rebounds. Junior Dante Nicholas finding success from beyond the arc. He was 4 of 5 from downtown on the night. South Dakota couldn't find the bottom of the net, shooting 29% from the field. Second half now, Metro up by 21. Nicholas with the acrobatic shot. You might see that in our top plays segment. Now how about some roadrunner defense? Junior college transfer Shakir Johnson with back-to-back -back blocks, keeping those hard rockers off the scoreboard. South Dakota's Robbie Fedora was the only rocker in double figures with 11 points. Metro forces 22 turnovers that turns into 17 points. And none were more exciting than this one as Miner slams this one home to put a stamp on the 82-51 win. And how about one more dunk for good measure? Sophomore guard. Reggie Evans takes the feed and uses the one hand on the jam. Oh yeah, definitely. This is what we want to do, you know, protect home. We don't lose at home. Come in here and get it done. Uh, it was a little sloppy, but you know, we, we pulled it out. We'll take it. We, you know, we'll take the, the win how we can get it. So, Coach, congratulations. What a great way to start the season. Thank you. We were happy with the way the guys came out with their effort defensively uh, to start the game. So, uh, talk about some of the players. Dante Nicholas had a great game for you. We knew at the beginning of the season he was going to be one of those guys that stepped up for you, and he did it tonight. Yeah, Dante's been doing a very nice job uh, in practices, leading, brings a voice. You know, we don't have many returners, so he does a nice job of setting that tone uh, each practice. The next day, Metro earned win number two over Johnson and Wales in the 82-57 blowout win at home. Reggie Evans led all scorers with 18 points on 8-14 shooting. The runner shot a sizzling 51% from the field, including 6-15 from downtown. After a split on the road, the runners returned home for their conference opener. Fort Lewis comes to Denver for a rematch of last year's RMAC Tournament Championship where Metro prevailed for their eighth tournament title. First half action, Justin Gallagher with the alley-oop layup to DeAndre Lansdow. Lansdow had a team-high 19 points. Brian Miner comes right back with the trifecta. Metro pushes the lead to as high as 12 points in the first half. The runner's defense was stout, holding the Skyhawks to only 33% shooting in that first half. Metro up 10 at the break. Fort Lewis forward Matt Morris scores 8 points to start the second half to cut the lead to only 2. Then David Kadyenia pops one in from the perimeter to give the Skyhawks a 2-point lead. But Metro is far from done. Miner finds the lane, slams it home. Then it's Flournoy with the spin, the bucket, and the foul. Flournoy scores 14 points on the night. Then it's Miner who flies over Lansdow for the poster dunk, and Metro goes on to win 70 to 65, holding Fort Lewis to zero points in the final eight minutes. Oh, that was real big. It uh, set the tone and it's big pickup from our last loss to a team that's in our conference. So it gave us a lot of confidence. Definitely so. And just talk about uh, your performance. You kind of slow start with the second half. You kind of sparked it up to get your team because they were losing, but you kind of been that spark plug to really get them going. Yeah, they all just told me to keep playing my game. I was on, down on myself. Minor, Tay, the coach, they all came over. They said, keep doing your thing. And that's what I did. It's always nice to get the first win in conference. Uh, it's not easy to get wins in this conference, so any one we can get, we will take. Since that great win over the Skyhawks, the men's team has gone 2-1 and one with wins over Adams State and Western State. As we head to our first break, check out the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference standings brought to you by the Regency. The Roadrunner Review is brought to you by its proud sponsors. Please visit Qdoba's downtown location at 15th and Market to try some warm three cheese queso, tortilla soup, or burritos you can't find anywhere else. And Panorama Orthopedics and Spine Center. From sports injuries to spine injuries to total joints for arthritis, they are in your neighborhood caring for your injuries located at three convenient locations, Golden, Littleton, and Thornton. 
We pass it on over to the women's basketball team where the Roadrunners started their season on the road. They split on their trip falling to number 10 West Texas A&M 57 to 44, but rebounded back for a 76 to 46 victory over Southwest New Mexico the following night. Metro then came home to Denver for their home opener against Eastern New Mexico. The runners were down 50 to 51 with two minutes to go, but Ray Bean hit a late three point play that gave Metro the lead for good. The senior scored 20 points and grabbed seven boards, earning her team their first home win on the season. Now on to the next night where Metro took on Northwest Missouri State. First half, Leandra Sands, the fake, and the two points for Metro's first field goal of the game. Then the Bearcats' Gabby Curtis comes up with a steal and the layup. Northwest Missouri State had an 11-8 lead. Metro had issues from beyond the arc, missing 6-9, allowing the Bearcats to keep it close. Sands with the spin move and the high off the bank. Then it's Kristen Valencia with a long two. She scored 10 on the night. Metro down three in the second half when Ray Bean began to heat up. After scoring one point in the first half, she she scores 13 over the final 20 minutes, but none were bigger than this three-point play to give her team a 52-50 lead with 2.23 left. Curtis then nails a long-range three to retake the lead for her Bearcats. With 34 seconds left, here's a play-by-play -play call from the game. What are they going to do inside to Bean? Bean outside, wide open, Valencia, corner, Wood goes in, huge shot! Emily Wood, great passing by Metro State, that's the best I've seen it all night. Northwest Missouri State had two chances to win it at the end, but they come up empty, and the Roadrunners escape with a 54-53 victory, their third win on the young season. How big of a shot was that, and is that maybe one of the bigger ones in your career? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just a freshman, so it's kind of just getting in the flow of things, but it was a big game and a big win for us just to start off the season. So was that play called for you to be on the end of that shot, or what happened on that play? Um, no, it wasn't. It was just good ball movement. We got it inside. We didn't have anything there. We kicked it around, and then... I was wide open, so we got the shot. All right, Coach, congratulations. Early in the season is a little too early for the gray hairs, wouldn't you say? It is. Uh, I'm going to start calling the cardiac kids. They, uh, they make it interesting, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, the important thing is, and what I told them is, we played two pretty good teams, and we didn't play our best, and we still were able to win. And we did some right things down the stretch in both games uh, and, you know, able to get – to come out 2-0 and after our, you know our first two home games. So I'm very, very proud of them. I thought we did a great job. We now jump ahead to the following week where our runners are getting fired up to take on the number three team in the nation in our Mac foe, Fort Lewis. Senior guard Leandra Sands was on fire in the first half, scoring 14 points, hitting the nice floater to give her team a 19-12 lead. Our Mac preseason player of the year, Allison Roselle, scores two of her nine first half points. Metro's lead got to as high as nine in the first half. Brandy Valencia with the deuce and the foul. Second half now, Bean finds room for the layup. She scores 19 in the game. Then it's Emily Wood with the left hand. Metro looking good to start the half, but here comes those Skyhawks. Katie McKee drains a three. She led all Hawks in scoring with 13 points. And another Katie, this time a Halco, hits one from up top to trim the lead to only two. But guess who comes to the rescue? That's right, Sands hits the long-range three that sparks an 11-3 run. She scored a career-high 28 points on 10 of 14 shooting, including four of six from downtown. And the runners pull off the huge upset over number three ranked Fort Lewis by a score of 75-65. to It was the team's first win over a ranked opponent since 2007. We're really excited. I mean, this is our goal. We've always, you know, wanted to beat Fort Lewis. They're a good team. Um, uh, like I was saying, our offense... We've been having trouble with our offense, but today we, we all played together. We all did well. We rebounded well. Our offense, we're patient on offense. So, I mean, we're really excited. We're going to enjoy this for a couple hours and then get ready for another good team tomorrow. Well, we're very, very excited. We've worked a long time for this, and our players have worked extremely hard all year, you know, from the start of preseason through practices, and, you know, they deserve it. And it's awesome. Just the feeling that they had in the locker room after the game, it's, it's really, really fun. Leandra did a great job, and she was ready for this game, and, you know, she had a great demeanor. You know, she knew that we could win, and I think taking that, everybody kind of fed off of her. She hit some huge shots down the stretch, uh, hit a couple of key free throws as well, and, you know, just had a, had a great game. But the highs of that win wouldn't last too long as the team fell to Adams State the next night. Metro shot 34% from the field, including 4 of 16 from beyond the arc, and only one runner scored in double figures. Our women's team has dropped two in a row since that loss to Adams State. While the defense is very solid, allowing just 54 points a game, the offense needs to find its stride as they average a mere 60 points per game, which ranks eighth in the conference. When we come back to the Roadrunner Review, we'll get caught up with all of the fall sports and their postseasons. Check out these RMAC standings in women's basketball brought to you by the Auraria Campus Student Auxiliary Services. We'll be right back.